everyone. It's good to see so many people out at the 10 o'clock service. Uh, it's uh, a change for, one, for most of us, having both uh, congregations together. It's really nice. I'm going to read a few of the announcements that are here, and then uh, we have a, a poem which is going to be read for the pantry. So, first of all, Sunday night campfires are back out at Nancy Robinson's. It says here they start on July the, Sunday, July the 3rd, but I believe today is the 2nd. Um, all are welcome at 7 p.m. every Sunday, uh, weather permitting, fellowship, sing songs, s'mores, swimming. I don't know whether you'd want to swim in this quite yet. Um, and call the church if you need any more details. Vacation Bible School is well organized, and I'm sure Lori has and her volunteers have it well underway. If there's any other children that would like to attend, please send them along. Um, there's a little thank you note here from Dave Edwards. It's good to see that Dave is at home and feeling better again. Turkey pies, if you're going down to the auditorium after church, turkey pies are on sale again, $6 each. They're trying to get them all out of the freezer um, and they're very, very good. We've had many of them. They're looking for crochet materials for some of the youth in our church. Um, not only needles and hooks, etc., but also the uh, supplies that they need, the yarn, etc. So if you can help out in any way, please do so. Tina is going to take over here. <laughs> So I would just like to start out by just saying that uh, yesterday, Pastor Ed and Eliana did a half marathon run uh, out at Ed's place in Kemble. Some of you were there, and we have documentation as proof. And uh, <laughs> it was really good. It was the personal best for both of them. So uh, neither of them had ever done that before. So they were just like champs. They, you know, <laughs> good spirited along the way. So congratulations to both of you. So if you have any donations to make, you can um, bring them into the church. You're more than welcome. Um, now my second one is about the pantry, and thus the poem that you were promised. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboards to give food to those in need. When she came there, the cupboard was bare, and she said, no, this cannot be. She went to Osher, but when she got there, they told her, our shelves are bare too. When she came back, she decided to ask her beloved Presbyterian crew, could you be little elves and help fill our shelves so people have something to eat? If you can help, Mother Hubbard will yelp and jump up and down with glee. So our shelves are dangerously low in the pantry. Um, they practically ran out uh, of giving food last week. Um, so we need everything, like everything. So if you could help, and for the record, I'll share their cupboards aren't necessarily bare, but when Lily and Nancy went there to get stuff for the pantry, they came back with some Mr. Noodles. So that was all they could find. So things are <laughs> really, really needed. So if you could help out, that would be great. Thank you.
Welcome everyone to worship. So good to be here and standing up after yesterday's run. <laughs> but sitting down is a hard part, then getting back up. Just to, just to let you know, Eliano came in about 20 minutes before I did at the end. But we still made it and it was such a great run, raising money for, um, and awareness for the Canada Food Grains Bank. So thank you all for giving and um, for supporting. And I, Eliana and I, can you see this? These are encouraging little placards that were given to us by Tina and Jackie came by and it was just a great day. We are privileged to come to worship. It is a gift to each one of us and it, it, it's meant to give us joy because that's what Jesus wants for us is a life of abundance, a life of joy in spite of the difficulties that are so prevalent in life, we know that God is with us, for sure. And we come to worship to be reminded, because we need to be reminded of our hope that never fails. So we're, I'm calling you to worship, and the call comes from God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, before we get into our worship service, we're going to sing number 800, which is, O Canada, just verse 1, okay? Canada Day weekend. And then we're going to read the land acknowledgement just before the prayer as well, a little later in the service. So shall we stand? And we're going to do that in a minute, yeah. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot. Please respond in the call to worship. I'll be the one and you be the all. Let us sing of God's steadfast love. We will offer our praise and song of joy. God's faithfulness is as vast as the heavens. We will proclaim God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God in our prayers and our praise. We will give God glory now and always. Amen. And shall we sing our opening hymn, My Song Forever Shall Record, number 54, if you want to follow in your book of praise.
And I'd just like to read the land acknowledgement at this time. We want to acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabek Nation. The people of three fires known as Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations and further give thanks to the Chippewa of Saugeen and the Chippewa of Nawash, known collectively as the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, as the tr traditional keepers of this land. And shall we come to our God in prayer? Dear God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, from north and south, from east and west, Drawn by your majesty, we come to worship you for the gift of the new day, fresh from your hand. We rejoice for the renewal we know through fellowship with Christ. We praise you for the Spirit's energy, blessing us in each moment. We honor you. Lord God, loving God, all of life is your gift. So, we, so give us, Lord, glimpses of your splendor and love in this time of worship. Accept our praise offered in word and action. Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, here and everywhere, now and always. Lord of all life and each life, we confess we cannot forget that life is your gift. We easily forget at the same time, especially when we face struggles or feel hard done by. We confuse our own desires for your will and stop listening for your guidance. Forgive us any hurt, Lord, we have caused by action or inaction and show us how to make amends. May we live with you and with each other in reconciling grace through the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, God knows that we have fallen short of our intentions for us, yet in his great mercy, God welcomes us back into his embrace. Thanks be to God that we are forgiven, we are refreshed and restored for ministry by God's grace. Amen. It's now time for the children to come forward. And um, I'm going to be leading the song with Matthew. Matthew's going to play the guitar. And um, I'm just going to say a few words, and we're going to sing together with the congregation. By the way, there's one word in this song, and it's hallelujah. So <laughs> memorize that, and we'll be good, okay? There's nothing on the screens today, but we got to know hallelujah. Yeah. Come forward, everybody. My grandchildren are here. And all the other children. Yeah. <laughs> Come on forward. Yeah. So Lori's away today, who usually does the, ch the children's song. So I'm filling in. Matthew is accompanying. So... Just to say, the word hallelujah. Does anybody know what that word means? Any? William. Pardon? It does. It's connected with joy because when we say hallelujah, we have joy and we praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's all say that together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Right, and we praise God because God loves us so much that he sent Jesus, who died for us, but then rose from the dead, so we know that life always wins. Even though things go wrong, life always wins, right? Yeah, <laughs> always. And we can always remember that, even when things aren't going that great. Life always wins. So, Every Sunday, we come to church to remember that Jesus rose from the dead, and we celebrate with joy, as William was saying. I love that. So we're going to sing Halle, Hallelujah, and we're going to start slow, and we're going to speed it up. So I would like, if you're able, please, congregation, please stand, because our vocal cords can better 
sing at that time, express what we're saying. So we'll start. Halle, 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 luya, halle, 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 luya, halle, 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 luya, halle, luya, halle, luya. Let's do it a little faster. Beautiful. I was going to do one more, but decided against it. It might be going too fast. Everybody can be seated. Yeah. Let's have a word of prayer. And I'll say something, and you say the same thing that I say, okay? Dear God, Dear God, dear God thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Where we come to worship you. Where we come to worship you. And sing hallelujah. With joy. With joy. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And um, we will continue the service at this time. And I believe there is... is there, there's no Sunday school today. Whoever wants to come with Jackie can come with Jackie. Even those... Uh, Never mind. <laughs> Everyone's free to come. So it's now time for our scripture reading. Sorry. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. Good morning again. <clears throat> Scripture reading this morning. The first half is from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. The second scripture lesson is taken from Matthew 10, verses 38 to 42. Not peace, but a sword. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is also not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Rewards. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of the prophet will receive a prophet's reward. 
And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of the righteous person will receive the reward of righteousness. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. This song will be familiar to those who attend the uh, 9 a.m. service, and although it'll be done a little differently than you're used to, please do join me in singing along. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Standing on this battleground Seeing just how much you've done Knowing every victory was your power in us Scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful You are faithful, God, you are faithful Scars and struggles on a way, but with joy our hearts can say, never once did we ever walk alone, carried by your constant grace, held within your perfect peace, never once, no we never walked alone, never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Every step we are breathing in your grace. Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful. God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. So today, we're just going to talk about the scripture that comes on kind of strong in Matthew 10. Those who lose their life will find it, and those who seek after their own life will lose it. And it's um, a basic message of the gospel, the basic message of Jesus, where it's important that we just don't add Jesus to our life like one of the spokes on the wheel where each of the spokes is another thing we do in life. We work, we have entertainment, we have our relationships with other people, we um, go on holidays, we have plans for the future, and we kind of just put Jesus as another spoke in the wheel. We kind of add Jesus on. And Jesus says, it's important that as a disciple, that I am the center. 
And I am, we're all in an apprenticeship, if you will. We don't have it all perfect, but we're on an apprenticeship of learning what it means to have Jesus at the center of our life and informing all of the spokes, right? All the things we do in life. Jesus is the hub. And this is spiritual formation. I did actually my doctor ministry on spiritual formation. And the joy that comes from that, I love that. Hallelujah. It means joy because the Christian faith is about joy. And not just this joy that is fleeting and uh, we have fun and, and we're, we're happy and then we're, we're sad, but a joy that is deep-rooted. So we're going to talk about that. Um, sometimes we get so focused on ourselves and then somebody will say to you, get over yourself. You ever had that? I've had it. <laughs> right? And we need to be reminded not to take ourselves so seriously. And I'm guilty of it as well. Need to be reminded. I come back to worship and I'm remembering again not to take myself so seriously, but take God seriously. So today, we're going to talk about that, is how do we lose our life, right? It's not just about us, where we're the center, but that we gain our life in abundance. When we have Jesus at the center, then we gain our own life as well. It's a beautiful story about the gospel, but it is harsh words because Jesus wants us to love him above all. Let's pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Finding and losing one's life. <clears throat> Jesus says, I've come to bring the sword. And you think, oh man, like, what does that mean? Because he is the Prince of Peace. Did Jesus call us to turn against members of our own family? Is this is what we're reading here? And the answer is no, he didn't. Rather, Jesus is pointing out that conflicts, even within family members, could happen because we follow him. And that's because Jesus calls each one of us to live a new life and put our old selfish ways behind us. But the people around us might not like that change. What, have you become a holy roller? You know, <laughs> Bible thumper? What happened to you? Right? People uh, have shared that with me and over the years that um, when they decided to follow Jesus, then the other people around them felt uncomfortable. The overarching message is that Jesus is gentle and kind. We know that. He is the Prince of Peace. He came to bring unity, to bring peace. Of course, we know that. That's, Jesus isn't saying he came to bring the sword literally, but he wants us to know that the way of following Jesus causes conflict among others right? And to be ready for that because it means people's, uh, their own lives get questions and they don't like that. The Pharisees didn't like it because Jesus was putting, pushing against injustice and they wanted to maintain their power over the people. The powers that be did not like his message and it caused conflict and it put Jesus to death, right? Jesus' strong words seem to come out of the blue, if you will. But it's important for us to consider the value of what Jesus is saying. I know the majority of people have love and kindness for others, okay? And they have that in them which reflects the nature of God because Jesus is in all of us, right? The Holy Spirit resides in all of us. But are you desiring, this is the question, to grow more and more where Jesus is central to your life and not just one of the spokes on the periphery, but is actually 
the center. And you learn how to do that. And prayer is really important. Meeting together, singing hallelujah, encouraging one another. Because we easily put Jesus off to the side, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Right? We read that in the Sermon on the Mount. We got songs that go with that to reinforce that. Seek first his kingdom. Have Jesus at the center. Then Jesus becomes more and more the hub, the central part, instead of on the periphery then the joy of God's love can flow more freely in you. You know you can come to prayer and Jesus through the Holy Spirit can give you comfort, give you the words to say, give you the guidance you need. And it's important that we practice that regularly, that we practice through prayer and we practice worship, which is a gift to each one of us so that the joy of the Lord can be with us in spite of all the conflicts and so on are in the world. We'll be more free to welcome others and become healers for others because God can flow through us because it's become a habit for us in our spiritual formation. It's just there. Of course, we're going to give an encouragement and say, God, be with you and, and help in any way you can help. So in my um, studies on my doctor ministry, I talked about the false self and the true self. And the false self is described as where most of our life is focused on the self, okay? Where the self is central to our decision making. Okay, now if, if I help my neighbor, you know, that probably will be good for me, right? Because then they will help me, right? And it's not all bad <laughs> to do that because we know that when we help others, then that gets reciprocated often. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, um, we, are, we are being um, embarrassed or, or, or we, can, we have to be disappointed, although it is important for us to receive thanks when we help others. But it's not the condition because we know that Christ wants us to help others and that is enough because we're following the will of God and we're building in us a character of helping and loving. So the false self is where most things are focused on the self and the self is central to our decision making. And I know I have to catch myself. I've been a minister for many years and I'm asking the question, is this about me? And sometimes the answer is yes, you know? And it's something we have to work on our whole life, but we get formed spiritually. The life of a disciple is being an apprentice where we learn from Jesus to have less and less focus on self and more and more focus on Jesus as central to our lives. And when we seek first the kingdom of God, the things we need, the joy we, we need, and the abundance that we have and experience in life will also become ours. But life is not always easy. And we still struggle with depression. We still struggle with uh, challenges in our life where other people don't. And we ask questions about that. But we know that God will work things out for good. We can trust that as we build a relationship and as we um, focus on Jesus. So Richard Rohr, theologian Richard Rohr, talks about the first and the second half of life. And in terms of spiritual formation, in the first half of life, you're... Now, where does the first half of life end? Anyone? I still think I'm in the first half myself, and I'm 61, but anyway. <laughs> I know I pass that, everybody, but... But where does it... What happens in the first half of life? And I remember Jackie and I, we got married in 1983, almost 40 years, by the way. <laughs> And we had these plans and, and what we're going to do and, and children and we were Christians already at that time and definitely God was part of it. But I think as I look back, I think God wasn't as much part of it as I would have liked, you know, as you look back. But 
we built our life and we think we need to do this and we need to do that and then we'll have enough money for this and, and for that. And it's more about providing for your life. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, Right? Because we need to make plans to buy houses. You go to university so you can have jobs and you can have enough money to pay for all the things you need in your life, right? But as you grow, these words from Jesus of losing your life and finding your life become more and more important, okay? Jesus, I think, is saying to us, okay, you were a bit more focused on yourself, <laughs> I'm calling you to be more focused on me. And that's the beauty of getting older, because people say, oh, this, and I know Eliana came in about 20 minutes before I did, so I'm already feeling my age, right? And I think, man, this body isn't doing it anymore like it used to. <laughs> I never did a marathon before, by the way. <laughs> Eliana, your first one too, right? Yeah. So you get older and you think, oh man, like this is this older age isn't great because of all the pains and, you know, things aren't working as well. That hip, man, whatever. Serious illnesses like cancer, right? Losing loved ones. There's a, hard, a lot of hard things, hard things in life. But as we get older, we, we get stronger in putting Jesus at the center of our life. Even though we're getting weaker physically, we get stronger spiritually. And it's such an opportunity for us as we get older to get stronger, knowing Jesus is the center and he will work things out for good. The true self practices the life of how we're meant to live it as children of God. We're all known by God, and the true self represents that, how we're meant to live, okay? To love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Finding and losing oneself. I remember, I don't know if this is the case with my children, but I remember when I was out of high school, and what is the next step, right? And I remember a common theme uh, among my peers was, I've got to find myself, right? And what happened, um, actually quite often, is people would go on a trip. They would go out west for a while, out to uh, Edmonton or Calgary or BC or wherever. And uh, others would go to Europe and they'd take a backpack with them. Anybody done that? Yeah? Some, right. <laughs> right. And it's a good thing, right? Find myself. Not just take any job to pay the bills, but... What am I going to do? Where's my purpose in life? And finding oneself. I, I went out west as well, but for a very short period, it, it came back again. I did miss my girlfriend, so that was <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> but it is important for us to continually know where our motivation is. Is it a, on ourself or is it on God who provides everything that we need? And it's important to examine one's life regularly to see how we are progressing, progressing towards embracing the love of God, the love of Jesus in our life. Leonard Cohen um, wrote many songs, and one that comes to mind for me is the anthem, okay? And it took him uh, many years to write this, and it's a beautiful song. If you haven't listened to it, I'm sure many of you have. You can uh, look it up on YouTube. And the um, refrain goes like this. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So it wasn't particularly inspired from Christian roots, um, but it speaks directly, I believe, to the message of Christ and who Christ was. 
Ring the bells that still can ring. Don't be downhearted. You have bells that you can still ring. There's things you can still do. You still have responsibilities. Do it. Okay? Forget your perfect offering, line two. Doesn't have to be perfect. God accepts all our efforts and works through our efforts with the Holy Spirit. Doesn't have to be a perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. We're not perfect. And then the last line is really important. That's how the light gets in. And the light is representative of Christ who gives hope, who is resurrection. And it's always happening. It's happening around us. Allow the light to come in. It's an opportunity for us. It's not a job, but the light is there. It's shining and be open to it. Allow the light to come in and do that as a practice, as a spiritual practice, I'm suggesting. In Mary Oliver's poem, Summer Days, she asks the poignant question, tell me what you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. And a a theologian responded by that line this way. He said this, Every time I read these words, I find myself answering the question with, I want to live. Live. Resurrection. I want to live my one wild and precious life. And it is an amazing thing that we are alive. Let's not take it for granted. My life is a gift that I don't want to squander. And yes, it is hard. And yes, there are obstacles and complications. And yes, the world has a lot of darkness in it right now. Right. But I still want to choose to live my life. I want to practice resurrection. The light comes in through the cracks. Sometimes it's hard to see, but it does come in. Not, I don't want to practice resurrection in a sense that I did not follow the command to practice resurrection because I have not done enough. But think of the term practice in this case meaning something closer to opportunity. It is there. Open your eyes. Let the bells ring. Today, I get to be a participant in resurrection. And if I'm participating, then that means that a piece of humanity is participating in line with what Jesus is already doing through the Holy Spirit. Finding purpose. There's a story of this young woman. Um, They belonged to a church. And uh, she was raised in the church and... um, she went to university and so on. Her parents helped her going through university. Parents were church members as well. And she had a desire to become a lawyer. So she studied and then through her time at university, she was connected with other Christian young people, uh, InterVarsity Fellowship, I think it was. And she got so excited. So she came home. And she said to her parents, guess what? I'm so excited and you will love this. You know what? I'm going to graduate, become a lawyer. But I've decided that I'm going to go to a developing country. And I'm going to be an advocate for those who are suffering injustice and need justice. I am so excited. And she had these wide eyes and her parents were looking at her with disappointed eyes. And they said, you studied all this time. You deserve to make good money, to join a law firm. And she was surprised. She was, Christ was becoming 
the center. And she was surpassing her parents. Christ was in their lives, but Christ was moving to the hub. So let us be challenged by Jesus' words. They come on strong. We are not to love things of this world, but when we love Jesus, we have Jesus as a center, I believe we can love others even better. Our old family members, we can forgive them. We can nurture them as children of God. We need to continue to lose our life so we can find it. Let's continue on as we're apprentices, we're disciples. And God calls us to that end in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing at this time, Follow Me, the Master Said, 645 in our Book of Praise. Yeah. Shall we pray in thanksgiving for the offering? Dear God, thank you for the abundance you give us. And as we give out of that abundance, as you call us to do in gratitude, Lord, we just pray that these gifts go to the advancement of your kingdom through the work of this church and let your name be glorified through it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Shall we come to our God in prayer? We've got three specific prayer requests that I want to share with you. First of all, um, a member of our congregation, and we've prayed for her recently, Linda Martin, has died. And 
her family was with her and uh, I was able to meet with the family and, and visit as well. Celebration of life will be later. I will, I will um, inform the congregation when I get more news, but I uh, want to hold the family in our prayers. Another member of our congregation and a member of our choir, Carol Makowski, her sister Diana died this past week. Okay, it was a bit of a, it was a surprise. There were health issues, but uh, it happened very quickly. So the funeral is Tuesday, I understand. I am not officiating. It's, um, you'd have to check the funeral home for the details on that. And that is the Brian E. Wood funeral home. Also, um, Carol's husband, Walter, is in the hospital. And uh, we just want to pray for Walter as well. Also, another member, Ruth Murray, was in hospital last week, had a fall, and she is recovering. So we want to hold her and her family up in prayer as well. Shall we come to our God in prayer? Dear God, you're the Lord of heaven and earth. With joy and thanksgiving, we praise you, for you create, sustain, and redeem all things. Lord, for making us in your image, we thank you for calling us to love one another and to care for your creation. We give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus, whose life is the pattern for our lives and learning. We give you thanks for the energy of your Holy Spirit that helps us see the light coming through the crack to inspire us in times of challenge and change. We give you thanks. Strengthen us in these challenging times to show your love to others as we pray for the church and those who lead it, to find new ways of reaching out in a culture with changing values. For creation, Lord, that we may learn to reverence and care for. For those who lead the nations of the world, that they may work for the well-being of the most vulnerable and seek peace together. Pray for those who make decisions about health care, about education and social services in these times when there are so many demands in every area. Lord, we pray for the poor, the hungry, and those struggling to find affordable housing when prices for everything seem to rise each day. Lord, for those who struggle with illness, addiction, disability, or despair. Those, Lord, who are here in worship today, those at home, and those in hospital. You know them by name, Lord. Pray for your healing. Let them know your presence, which will never leave them. Lord, we pray for Carol Makowski's husband, Walter. Pray for the healing that he needs. We lift him up to you, Lord. We pray for Ruth Murray as she, Lord, recovers at home. Give her the strength and the healing she needs. Lord, we pray for those who mourn the loss of someone dear. Lord, we pray for the family of Linda Martin. Give them your peace that surpasses all understanding. And let the resurrection of you, Lord, fill their hearts and give them peace so they know that life will always win over death. Good will always win over evil. Thank you for the gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus. We pray, Lord, for Carol's sister's family, for Carol and her family. Lord, we pray that you give them peace through this loss of Diane. And let the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life be in their lives as well. Lord, 
We pray for the powerless and the oppressed, wherever they live, and for those who's, who work to defend them. We thank you. Hear us now as we pray in silence for situations on our own hearts this day. Eternal God, thank you for listening to us in every situation. Keep our eyes open for your spirit at work among us. Equip us to respond to someone else's prayer as your servants, as we offer ourselves to you in the words that Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And shall we sing together at this time, How Firm a Foundation, number 465 from our Book of Praise. Lift up your hearts to God. Receive his blessing and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance, the power and love of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen.
Please be seated, everyone. 